It's Red Friday, and that means the march to the 2023 baseball season has begun. Welcome on Inside Bush Stadium. I'm Emily Stevens. I'm Brett McMillan. Pleased to be joined by Cardinals President of Baseball Operations, John Mosaylock. Mo, thanks for coming down and uh, talking a little bit about the, the season to come. We appreciate you making the time. Yeah, happy to be here. Thank you. Well, let's start with this. It's a little bit of an interesting winter, I think, for those who are really into hot stove, some payroll flexibility, and for the first time, looking with what to do with catcher for two decades now. There's been one guy to be penned in there. So do you enjoy kind of having a little bit of a, I don't want to say blank canvas, but some flexibility you wouldn't normally have in a given winter? Well, I do think this is an opportunity for, for the St. Louis Cardinals when you specifically talk about catching, because as you mentioned, it's been two decades since we've really been on that market. And when you look at where Yachty ended up his career, you know, he's going to be a very difficult player to replace. So we're not looking to have someone just try to fill his shoes in the sense of being an elite defender, first ballot Hall of Famer. But having said that, you know, trying to find something that might look, fit the role of a little bit more offense, uh, balanced with defense, is something that we're hoping we can accomplish. But you know, overall, going into this this off season, you know, we have a lot of opportunities. We think we have a really good team to build around, so it's a good place to start. Lots of excitement leading into 2023. Last season for Adam Wainwright, 19 seasons. I mean, that just speaks volume about this club. So, what all does it mean just to have Adam? He certainly proved to be an amazing asset to this club. Well, I think anytime you talk about Adam Wainwright, I mean, the, you, you go back really 20 years again when you think about what he's meant to this franchise. And, and you know, I think it starts with just his personality. I think everybody would, would think of him as a friend. And I think that really speaks volumes. But he's also an elite player. And, and you think about his contribution on the field, what he does in the clubhouse, and really what he means to his teammates, and then ultimately what he means to our fan base. It's special. And it's... Uh, like anything, things do come to an end, and in this particular case, um, I believe he's hinted at it or, or, or stated it will likely be his last year. Who knows? Um, exactly. <laughs> but, I, but I do think like as, as we get to experience his last lap around the sun, I think it's going to be something that we can all enjoy. You know, I really wish him a healthy and happy and successful 2023 because he's just uh, he's an amazing guy, and we're, we're lucky that we can all say that we got to know him and, and get to work with him. An MVP caliber type season for Paul Goldschmidt, really for both the guys on both corners. What stood out to you about what Paul was able to put together and what does that just consistent presence that he brings give the club? You know, I think like anytime you talk about first baseman, most people's immediate thought is, oh, it's probably the least athletic player on the field. But it's actually probably one of the most important positions on the field because you think about like over the last few years and, and how well we've played defense. I think he takes so much pressure off all our position players because they know they can make any type of throw to him and he's going to catch it. So he has this ability to make other people better and we've gotten to witness that really from, from all our infielders. And, you know, he's just, uh, his baseball IQ is, is just off the charts, right? He just knows the game. He's, he's always like one step ahead of how people are thinking about it. So his preparation and how he improves really everybody else's game, I think ultimately is what makes him so special. But then you also see him hold that bat and his contributions that he makes from an offensive standpoint is something that's super impressive. But, you know, he's had an amazing season this past year for us, but he's expecting to have a better one next year. And that's what I think is what we most admire about him because he knows how to grind, he knows how to go pole to pole, and he knows how to make people better. You can't talk about Goldie without talking about his friend Nolan Arenado, and he's here to stay. I know fans were very excited to hear that. I know Nolan, he wants to be in St. Louis, and he's really proven that he loves this city. Yeah, obviously there was, a, I guess, a, a period of, of, of some nerves or uncertainty, uh, especially from our fan base, on what was going to happen there. But, look, he he knows how complicated it was to get him here. He knows that, that he's really happy being here in St. Louis. And he knows that we're, we have a good thing going. So, you know, all the other things that could have happened had he opted out, I think in the end did not get him to where he is here. And, and so ultimately you have to go through the exercise. We go full circle with it. But um, I'm so excited he's coming back and, and going to be here for many years to come. Had those veterans on the corners that really anchored the club, along with Yachty and Albert and Adam last year. But then some young guys that made big contributions, Brendan Donovan, Juan Yepes, Lars Newtbar. What does that say about the way you guys have been able to develop and draft talent that those guys stepped in? And I mean, not just at-bats, but meaningful at-bats, meaningful plays in the field. Developing 
is key to our success. And what you saw this past year was exactly why we've been able to maintain the many years of success that you've been able to watch. And so for us, I really think what's exciting about where we are today from an organizational standpoint is, yes, those guys made meaningful contributions. They're, they're exciting young players, but we have more to come. And when you think about like what we have with the Jordan Walker and, and, and how quickly he's rising up through the ranks and Mason Wynn, uh, these are all decisions or, or, or having to factor into our decisions on what we do this offseason because you know we do have a bunch of really talented young players coming, and that's great news for our fan base. It was neat to see some of the older guys kind of mentor. You know, you saw Albert and Juan. You saw Nolan and Lars sometimes. Above all, I mean, you're a manager of people. That's a people business with baseball. Is there something that you guys intentionally do to kind of try to make those things happen? Or is that maybe something that just comes from the quality of people that you have downstairs? Well, ho- hopefully you're signing and bringing people into the organization that, that understand that and, and ultimately embrace that. Um, you, you want it to be more organic than something forced and you want those friends and relationships to be built that that have trust with one another and so you know I think you know Ollie did an amazing job as a manager in his first year I think he built a lot of bridges for a lot of these young players to feel comfortable talking to to some of the veterans so you know I don't think it's any one person I think it's a combination of, of, of a lot of people and how they think through leadership management and relationships. I mean, speaking of Ali Marmol, what a great guy, first off. But how about his first season, you know, as a manager? What stood out to you just about him and his approach? You know, obviously I've known him for a long time. So I think like when people always ask about just his first year, you know, for me it's really, like, 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 you know, some of your parts. You're like what I've gotten to learn about him over the last decade. But, you know, I think anytime you step into a job that, that no matter how much you think you're preparing for or you have experience for, it's still a new job and there's going to be a lot of things that that surprise you but you know he really balanced the relationships with players staff and media i think really well and and i think most importantly his communication style and how transparent he was with the players was something that i admire and i thought was something that he really benefited from in the long run it seemed like every time i saw a fall league headline this fall there was a cardinal involved so some of those guys i assume will be coming to camp they'll maybe have a chance to show what they can do obviously you don't want to put too much pressure or expectation on any one guy but is that a box that's important to you guys that that a player check on his way to maybe having a chance to to contribute meaningfully the next year at the big league level? Not necessarily because it's a bit unfair to say yes it is because a lot of times we don't send pitchers because of their workload the previous year and so a lot of people don't get that opportunity to check that box but I will say with this group I think everybody that we sent out there you'll probably see at Major League Camp given the success they had so that's really exciting to see but even more important you know the takeaway of of how people play in that league is is really a pretty good idea of what you're going to see from them in future years. And so to see the success that our younger players had out there was was you know really exciting. And I think Connor Thomas was probably the one that was most eye opening because to be named you know pitcher of of that league is is really impressive. And more importantly, just the changes he made with with his pitch style, his pitch selection, and the addition of a secondary pitch you know, really added to his success out there. But so from our standpoint, we're thrilled what we saw out there, and we're certainly excited about that future for them. Speaking of pitching, our bullpen, it's great to have Hicks back, great to see what Helsley could do. Uh, What are you looking forward to most about just the current bullpen that we have now? Well, I think the current bullpen, bullpens are always defined really by health and consistency, right? Because when you see inconsistency in bullpens, that's when, you know, fan base screams, everybody's like gets worried. I think for us, you know, obviously, you know, having a closer and a setup man already in place is, is helpful, but really it's going to be like ultimately what pieces end up growing from there because, you know, as you, as you look at our roster and you look at how that bullpen is, there's not a lot of openings, but it's going to be with what people do with those opportunities. So I do think there's, there's some opportunity for some younger pitchers, somebody like a Woody to, to actually grab hold of a, a role out there. And I think that's good news. But the key for us next year is going to be, can we stay healthy and can we be consistent? Matt Holliday will be joining Ollie's staff. Those two are really close. Uh, It'll be exciting for the fans to have Matt back in the fold. But I know for you guys, it's not just a nostalgia move. I mean, there'll be nostalgia, but he'll help to, to get wins in the win column for this club. What about the process talking to Matt made you think, okay, this guy's ready to step into this role at this level? 
Well, so a couple thoughts on that. Um, obviously, with Skip Schumacher getting the, the Miami job, he's, that's going to be a loss, but happy for him and, and well-deserved. But he was someone that, you, you know, I think helped redefine that position. And, and so when we were looking at, at who do we couple with Ollie to be a good team? And, you know, Matt has that major league presence. He has that major league experience. But he also is a student of the game. Uh, you know, obviously, in, in my seat, you get to have pretty intimate conversations with how people think about the game, how they would prepare for the game. And, and Matt was someone that, that obviously took that very seriously. He grew up in a baseball family. His father was a college coach. His brother's currently a college coach. So talking baseball is just something natural for him. And more importantly, he understands it. And so I think like how he can really help Ollie and help our club was, was a very real part of the decision-making. It wasn't so much about, oh, Matt played for the Cardinals. That's nice to have that dotted line. But what's more important is how can he support Ollie and the rest of that staff? And I think he's energized. I think you know the biggest question for him was the timing. He still has young children and, and trying to decide if being away from home makes sense for him. But he decided the time was right and uh, the opportunity was there. And so he took it. Let's end on this, Mo. It's Red Friday. Tickets are on sale, cardinals.com for 2023. You know, I thought it was interesting in your kind of end of year uh, press conference, you, you made note of how big it was that the fans filled the building, how impactful that was to what the Cardinals are able to do going forward. I think sometimes fans feel like they're part of it, but maybe that the people in the dugout, the people that are running the clubs don't always notice, but really everybody on the front office side very much notices how the fans show up, don't they? Well, someone who gets to travel around quite a bit, um, you know, I have a unique perspective. You go to a lot of different ballparks around the country and you do not see the same thing you see here. And, you know, St. Louis is a special place and it, it's basically being defined because of our fan base. And, you know, we're so lucky that on Thursday, Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays, this place is packed. Even on a Monday and Tuesday, we still sometimes draw. So, you know, that's a, really a compliment to our fan base. and you know, candidly, like we can't do the things we get to do based on our market size without our fan support. So, you know, we're grateful for that. And for anybody that doesn't think we pay attention to that or don't appreciate that, they're, they're really missing it because we are grateful for all the support we get. Well, Mo, thank you for your time. Congratulations on a great 2022. It's going to be a fun 2023. Again, if you want to join us this summer at Bush Stadium, tickets are on sale right now, five and ten game packs and all-inclusives at cardinals.com. For Emily Stevens, John Mosaloc, I'm Brett McMillan. That's it from here at Bush Stadium.